Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Natalie Zadon, our main host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury. And for the last match for tonight, we're going to have a match between Zenfer and FFC on Aurelian. Unless FFC massively protests, which I don't think they will. It's a pretty good sport. Anyway, FFC going for Shipyard. Hey, Shipyard on Aurelian. I wanted to see how this is going to play out. Ships versus ships on Aurelian. The last time we saw this map, it was a hover mirror, and I don't really think hover mirror is the best way to go for this. I mean,. Okay, it's not a bad way to go. It's still perfectly valid. It's just that hovers are more viable on larger maps. I wanted to see how ships worked. So we've had this map in the competitive pool, in the matchmaking pool, for I think a month and a half now. I'm really curious to see how this is going to play out now that the players have had a really good chance to get used to the meta, get used to how it plays out. So far, starting with Cutter Mirror. No surprise there. Spamming Cutters is a pretty safe opening strategy. We cut her into Seawolf for FFC, and it looks like... With Zenfer, it's going to be Cutter and a Hunter. So at this point, Zenfer, I guess, expecting FSC to go for the Sea Wolf, which is, I mean, a completely fair expectation, because that's exactly what's going to happen. The Cutters coming in here, just scouting things out. They don't deal a huge amount of damage. I mean, if you get enough of them, of course they will, but their base damage is like 35. So even getting rid of a Metal Extractor is a bit of a chore. You need about 10 of them to be able to have a chance to get it down in a reasonable time. Or I guess 7 or 8 to get it down in a reasonable time. You'd need 12 to one shot. Which, admittedly, for a unit that costs... No, it costs 70, yeah. No, a lot of the value is the disarm. Which is still good. I mean, it still does prevent them from... I believe it prevents them from mining. But yeah, that's... That's more of an advantage for FFC right now. Zen for having switched over to Hunters. They're going to have a bit of an easier time wiping out the Cutters, but the Cutters for Zen for going to have much... Sorry, Cutters for FFC are going to have a much easier time wiping out the Metal Extractors. And, of course, Cutters are fast. So they can just get away from things and not have to worry about it. And at the same time, Zenfer is entirely distracted by this. They can't really counter raid. Still, though, like I said, the main advantage is the disarm. And that Hunter is pretty well disarmed. Ooh, but that's what I was talking about there. I see the torpedo coming in, wiping out a couple cutters very easily. Another torpedo won't be coming in because that Hunter got disarmed. Again, that is exactly what cutters do. But good cook thinking from Zenfer coming in, getting a course there to get rid of all the cutters. But again, that's exactly what FFC wants, because FFC is going to be going for that Seawolf, and they got rid of the Hunter. So the Seawolf is going to be running basically unthreatened until another Hunter pops up, and that's not going to happen. A Seawolf is actually going to be coming out from Zenfer, so it will be a bit of a Seawolf mirror. But hey, the Cutters are on the surface. This Corsair cannot deal with the Seawolf, and the Seawolf is just finishing up in FFC's factory. So there'll be a very short window where FFC will have a reasonable advantage. Possibly no window at all, actually, because it looks like Zenfer is going to be done with that Seawolf before FFC is done, or at least before FFC is able to get it in position. No, oh, never mind. It's going to be fairly even. So the Cutter is able to just start harassing around the map, and this is seven Cutters. They can two-shot anything. Or two-shot any mexes. Not anything, obviously. <laughs> no, just send in, send in a detriment. It'll just two-shot it. No, they can two-shot any mexes. But it's still pretty good. And again, this Urchin getting disarmed, completely nullified. Same time, though, FFC is not really concerned about that, considering that they aren't really worried too much about raiders. There's not a whole lot of raiders coming in. And a bit of an advantage here. The Seawolf... Oh, I had an advantage on positioning against its opponent, Seawolf. But it wasn't quite enough. The Corsair... That was the initial target. Didn't do its job. Oh, never mind! Seawolf's actually facing away from each other. And, of course, because FFC has that second target to work from, it's totally fine for them. Zenfer, not quite close enough to hit with their own Seawolf. Oof, that is... That is close. It's... It is such... Such a short contest, but as, as long as FFC Seawolf keeps moving, it's going to be fine. I don't see any Hunters coming in, however. There's nothing really coming in to try to deal with that Seawolf. Although, with the Seawolf having fired off its shot on all these Cutters, it's going to go down. Zenfer's losing their Seawolf to FFC's. FFC completely fine there. Great micro there by FFC to keep their Seawolf alive. The Corsair should go down soon afterwards. There is a Hunter to try to deal with the Seawolf from FFC. But FFC should be able to out the Corsair before the Seawolf goes down. And one more shot! No, it's not going to go for it. Gonna run away from the Hunter, and the Hunter should be able to kill off the Seawolf. Yeah, unfortunately that Corsair is still around, but the Cutters, if they even just... If the Cutters just spit on it, two Cutter Missiles will wipe out this Corsair right now. Or sorry, three Cutter Missiles of 74. If you had four health, it was two. Sheesh, that's embarrassing. So close to dead! At the same time, Zen for going for a counter raid. They weren't leaving that lying down. Bunch of cutters going in the back lines, and those are going to have a bit of a tough time. The urchins should be able to take out most of them. We got two urchins against a bunch of cutters, and on top of the fact that there's still sea wolves in the base. Like, there's still units to deal with the cutters. 
So these cutters aren't really going to manage to do all that much. Disabling a few things here and there, but forced to retreat. Not even really able to do much damage. Losing two of their number, and going to try to get into the back here, but again, the urchins are totally in range. And granted, this cutter, these cutters could actually wipe out some of the metal-like strategies, but the urchins were not spotted in time, wiping out all the cutters. This won't accomplish much. I mean, they do disarm some of the metal -like strategies, which is still good. And yes, looking at the economy window, that does in fact help. But FFC doesn't matter. Like, this is a problem we saw in that first game, is that FFC is not building a whole lot of energy at first, and they're actually accessing metal. So Zenfer's not really doing them a whole lot of damage. FFC's al FFC has already done the damage to themselves, since they haven't built the energy needed to actually use all the metal they have. Which is a bit of a shame, but hey... At least FFC doesn't have to worry so much about raiding, I suppose. It's a bit of a weird thing to not have to worry about, but and that's exactly what's happening. That being said, that FFC running cutters and seawolves against hunters and cutters, I would give Zen for this. Just in terms of unit composition. I mean, a lot of it comes down to usage, and FFC's micro has been on point. But this economy advantage is starting to become a bit of a problem. I mean, you have 20 metal per second, soon to be 30 metal per second into Zen for his base. FFC just does not have any caretakers, or has one caretaker that's not really doing all that much. It, wait, what? Oh, you have got to be kidding me. What is that caretaker doing? Oh, yeah, it's not a caretaker. What am I saying? It's the lack of power. That's what it is. The geothermal plant. That's the thing we care about, is the geothermal plant. And that is being built up. Once that gets done, it'll be good. But at the same time, it's not just theirs. Zenfer's got one of their own. Mind you, they're also pretty even on energy, but again, Zenfer's been able to use that energy to build more units. FFC's just been accessing a bunch of metal. I mean, if you look at the metal excess right now, it's... What is it right now? Metal excess, a thousand... You know, 600 metal excess difference. But that's still a lot, and FFC's continuing to excess. Zenfer stopped accessing a while ago. FFC just now finally got the energy needed to stop accessing at all, and they only have one caretaker with which to do it. I mean, a Mariner is up. That might be used to help do some additional construction work. And yeah, there's the caretaker to help burn through some of that metal. Once that's done, FFC will have an advantage. But again, it's more a matter of positioning. And FFC doesn't really have the advantage there. They do, however, have enough radar to be able to know whether or not something's coming in. And will be able to help sort of take care of it. The Hunters, again, are a bit of a threat. The Cutters are going to help. But I kind of wish we'd see some Corsairs. Like, if FFC had some Corsairs, they'd have a, be they'd have a considerably easier time getting rid of these Hunters. And then they wouldn't have to worry so much about whether or not they're being attacked by, well, hunters and sea wolves because the sea wolves just get rid of everything else. However, FSC sea wolves are in position to help get rid of that corsair, or would have been, but it doesn't matter. They're able to get rid of the hunters anyway. The cutters coming in, disarming the hunters. Sea wolves wiping out the other sea wolves, and that is forcing retreat from Zenfer. Does not want to lose that corsair if they can help it, and that puts more reclaim in FFC's territory. At this point, they're looking at another 270 metal worth of reclaim, while Zenfer, on the other hand, I mean they're. Okay, economically, but now FFC has actually started to pull a bit ahead economically. But again, FFC is... Are they ahead? Really? No, they're about even. Army value is about the same. But that's still good. FFC managed to win a bit on attrition, despite the fact that they had lost some metal to some excess earlier. They're still fine. They're actually doing reasonably okay for positioning, but right now they're going in blind. Cutter's doing a fine job scouting for them, though, so that's still handy. But ultimately, FFC is going in blind to this fight, and didn't quite know there was a Siren there, for one thing. Bearing in mind, Sirens have a sonic weapon that can hit underwater that does deal with Sea Wolves fairly effectively, in fact. Splash damage against submarines that are all grouped up together. Not really a bad thing. Same time, though, we do have some Locusts coming in around the side, so... Yeah, that's not unusual. Gunship Locusts switch over just to have a way of getting rid of some of the metal extractors, getting rid of some of the caretakers. I mean, there's not a whole lot of anti has been built up, so, it will work. Because, again, one of the things to bear in mind about sea games, especially with urchins in play, is that urchins can only hit things in the water. Unlike with lotuses and pickets, which are kind of the general purpose ground defense, urchins don't defend against locusts. And at the same time, now, I mean, sirens do help with that. The sirens so far forward, I mean, FFC just defending against this, but the thing is, FFC, of course, they are still a bit of an economic disadvantage, so they have to be able to win this fight with a fairly large attrition advantage, and they're actually having a hard time maintaining their position, on top of the fact that Zenfer's gone for a bit of a hover switch, going in for Claymores, that is a very effective choice there. I mean, these Sea Wolves are dead. All of them is going down, basically, to that one Claymore. Where is the Hovercraft Factory, anyway? Ah, it's down here. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, to get that one Claymore, but still, it works out. Or two or three Claymores, but still. That was an amazing switch off there, and I think Zenfer might be able to 
take this or at least get a massive advantage for, as a result. They're going around the sides from the looks of it to harass through here. At the same time, there is oops, same time there is this group of locusts. Ten locusts coming over to the north side of the map, which should be able to wipe out some of the economy, but that's not going to matter. Zenfer's inside of FFC's base. There's there's no way to stop this without coming in with the locusts, revealing them and using them to wipe out the claymores. Because right now, the claymores are destroying everything. Like, claymores are an amazing unit to have. They're kind of weak. They're, I mean, they're kind of frail. But once they get in and start dealing damage, if they don't friendly fire, which I think they've gotten smarter to avoid doing, then it's going to be a slaughter of your opponent's units. And heck, even if they do friendly fire, it's still going to be a slaughter. It's just going to be a little more even-handed than just your opponent's units. So yeah, at this point, FFC, they are having a hell of a time trying to deal with this stuff. I mean, the Locusts are coming around the back, and I guess that might be used to try to encourage Zenfer to retreat, maybe. But I think Zenfer's just going to go for a Shredder and not worry about it. Although, sorry, Zephyr, not Shredder, what I'm saying. Although that Zephyr is actually having a bit of a hard time staying up. Zephyr is up, but it goes down just as quickly. The next Zephyr is trying to be built up. The Caretakers are too worried about healing themselves and getting this Razor up to actually deal with anything else. The Shipyard should go down quickly enough to stop the Zephyr, the Zephyr from existing. Shipyard is down. The Razor is up. There are enough Locusts to actually contest that Razor. That Razor is going to go down. And at the same time, over to the south, there is still an advantage for Zenfer. They can still start getting into the base, but FFC's used this as a distraction to start building up a bunch of cutters, which I'm guessing they're going to plan to use to wipe out that that Siren, because, you know, disarm the Siren and go from there. And no, they're going for the Claymores instead! Getting rid of as much of the Claymores as they can, forcing a bit of friendly fire on top of that. While at the same time, the Locust able to get rid of all the Razors, able to get rid of the Caretaker, so no Razor can really be built up that easily. There is, however, a Flail being built up, because again, a Hovercraft Factory does exist, and Flails are very strong anti-air. But this has still been a very effective harassment coming in from FFC. And there's still a bunch of stuff over to the north. There are Razors being built up over to the north, but... Zenfer had not built them up in advance, so it's going to take a little while, and if those locusts are quick about it, and it looks like they will be, they should be able to get in and start getting, because they're going to be running away from the flail, so they're going to be going north. They're going to get that Mariner. That Razor is not being built, and so Zenfer is kind of stuck in front of FFC's base, more worried about protecting their own base than fighting FFC's, giving FFC plenty of time to build up, getting some Harpies, getting some Sea Wolves, and they can stun out this, okay, they're not going to stun out this Siren with only one Cutter, but still. Dealing enough damage that it's definitely been worth it. I mean, we still have five Locusts left. Half the Locusts that were used in from the beginning. Still managing to deal boatloads of damage. Like, okay, so seven Locusts died at the cost of the Sea Factory, a bunch of Mariners, a couple of Razors, all the Caretakers, several Wind Generators, five Metal Extractors, and a Geothermal Plant. Those Locusts made cost. Well done, FFC. This could actually be a bit of a turnaround point. I'm not entirely convinced, though, because that Siren is still very scary. But... It's not bad. It's not a bad position to be in. I mean, the Siren is scary, but it's also taking a fair bit of damage as well. Now, these razors, these razors are being a problem and stopping the Hoppers from doing too much. I mean, FFC, they're kind of back on track. If they just get one more Caretaker or get the Commander to start helping out with the factory, that should be enough to use all their metal. And from there, they would at least have enough in terms of overall cost to be able to push through. Although, yeah, the Claymore being a bit of a problem. I mean, what counters Claymore? Of course, it's probably not a bad option. Cutters in large enough numbers, I guess, but the problem is that it's kind of countered by Claymore, so not a great option. But yeah, I would go for either air or... If you got enough air because the races are in play, I would think... I would think Corsairs would work okay. Or Mistrals. Mistrals might work too. I'm not sure if they're long enough range. That's 610 range compared, or 610 ML range compared to, hmm. Yeah, actually, you know, Mistrals would probably be a really good idea against Corsairs, come to think of it. I mean, they're kind of a riot unit, and Mistrals are kind of a skirmisher, so it makes sense. But yeah, in terms of range, they they would be outranged. The Corsairs would be, or sorry, the Claymores would be completely outranged by the Mistrals. I mean, it's a bit of a hard thing to maintain when you have a bunch of other units coming in to try to deal with. But, yeah, shipyards have skirmishers. I don't know, this is something I don't know, unless Mistrals are apparently just seen as too terrible to even bother with. But, no, Mistrals would probably wipe out Claymores. Oh, that was a, that was a shame. I mean, FFC is watching this. I don't know, maybe they can pipe up in the chat about what their opinion was on Mistrals or if they even thought about it, because... I mean, that would be a thing I would try. Just has range. 
I'd probably try Corsairs at first just for the extra damage to wipe them out, but yeah, otherwise I'd say Mistral just to outrange them. Warzone. Try to work from there and then make it work. I mean, FFC was doing fairly well considering they had a lower economy the entire time. I mean, look at the middle income. It was, I mean, it was a giant spike in the middle of River Zenfer. An army value was never really quite there, but really it was only at the very end. For the most part, Zenfer was actually not quite as efficient when it came to units. Or they're about even. Okay, FSC pointing out that they weren't sure if Mistrals would have worked because of Envoys and how to deal with Claymore Envoy. And I can see that. What's Envoy's fire rate? Five second fire rate for 600 damage. And Mistral, which, oh, I can't see what it is right now because there are no living city factories. Okay, well, forget it. But yeah, Mistral, I think, I think we have enough health to survive. And Envoy is a slow moving projectile. So if it's slow moving, long range artillery projectile, I think the Envoys, you just throw, like, I guess a Seawolf Mistral team would probably do it. Like, the Seawolves to get rid of the Envoys or at least slow them down. The Claymores would be baited by the Seawolves, and then the Mistrals can just wipe out the Claymores as the Claymores try to defend the Envoys. And the Envoys are going to be firing on the Mistrals, but you can just kite the Mistrals around to... Or not... You can just dance the Mistrals around to avoid getting hit by Envoy shells. Like, just, I don't know, make them go into an S pattern or something, so the Envoy shells never hit. Or a figure eight pattern or something like that. The Envoy shells just keep missing, because they're firing where the Mistrals were, and the Mistrals just keep dancing around. But, I mean, yeah, the Envoys do definitely outrange Mistrals. There's no doubt about that. By half. But, yeah, I mean, I think that I think it would have worked. Okay, FSC pointing on the chat. They only really know C up to the Corsairs. I guess that means the Hunter, the Cutter, and the Corsair. So, that makes sense. But, yeah, there are Mistrals. Missiles are a thing. Sirens are a thing, though I wouldn't have recommended that in this case because they're fairly expensive for what they could do. I mean, they would have been more vulnerable to the Envoys. They might have worked, though, actually. But yeah, I don't know. Sirens, eh. I think Mistrals would have been a better option. I would have loved to see what happens with Mistrals. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's entirely a question of cost or a question of how much money or the fact that FSC was being just pounded on by everything on all sides. But yeah, I think if instead of Cutters, there'd been a lot of Mistrals or a handful of Cutters with a bunch of Mistrals... Or not a handful, at least. Mistral Sea Wolf instead of Cutter Sea Wolf. I could see that actually working. Like, when the Locust attack happened, as as part of the backline thing, when you're rebuilding your army because the damage was being done, like sorry, the damage was being done to Zenfer's base, and Zenfer was less was more distracted when attacking the front lines. I could see from there right then it switched to switch to Mistral Sea Wolf, then use that to wipe out the Claymore Envoy, reclaim this part of your base, and then keep going. Because the Locust provided a lot of momentum. It was just hard to capitalize on that because Zenfer already had set up. But I think Mistral Seawolf might have worked then. Anyway, that is going to be it for me tonight. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. And yeah, until next time, have a good night. Oh, and if you're wondering about my hands, they're better. They're still not perfect. I'm... Okay, it's not my hands. It's that I hurt myself working out a few days ago. Like, I had an issue with my neck... Because, for those of you wondering, who might be younger, who don't have, have never had any issues with hands yet. The biggest thing is make sure your back and shoulders and neck are in reasonably good shape. And you have you stretch them and you work them out, whatever. And I do. Now, the problem I had was that I just had some really bad pillows and it pinched some nerves in my shoulders. And I didn't realize what was going on. So I was running my arms like a tenth of the normal strength and I ended up straining them as a result. And that's pretty much healed up. The problem was I was working out about last week. And as I was working out, I basically had some really bad form doing lat pull downs and hurt my neck. So it's not so much that my hands hurt as rather my neck hurts and it's pinching nerves and hurting other nerves that go to all the way down to my hands. But it's entirely up in my neck and shoulders. And I have an appointment with a physiotherapist like today in an hour or two. So yeah, I've got that sorted, but... I don't want to push it quite yet. I still realize that my hands are kind of in recovery mode from having strained the muscles a couple weeks ago. and So I don't want to push it quite yet, but they are definitely improving. So thank you for asking. And yeah, like I said, I repeat, it's important to exercise your back and your shoulders and your neck if you can. Stretch it. Work it out if you can. It's important to work out all your upper body, but neck, shoulders, and back get neglected a lot when people are talking about hand issues because... Those are support muscles. You need those to be able to use the rest of your hands. Anyway, 
But yeah, again, thank you for watching. Thank you for your concern. And until next time, good night.